Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're creating a looping flag in Cinema 4D. So we're going to start things off in Adobe Illustrator this time. Basically, we just want to design the overall shape of our flag, and I find it a lot easier to draw this out in Illustrator. We're going for the tattered flag look today. And if we grab our point selection tool and hit Control A, you can see how many points there are here. It's nice and detailed. If you were to try to draw this out with the spline tools in Cinema 4D, it would take forever. So feel free to design your own flag here, or you can just use the one that's included in the project files. So an easy way to get this into Cinema 4D is to just come up here and choose Save As, then pick a file location. And when this menu pops up, Make sure up here under version, you change Illustrator CC to Illustrator 8. And that should import nice and easy. We'll hit OK and I'll meet you over in Cinema 4D. Welcome back. I'm just going to go off screen here and grab our Illustrator file that we've just made and drag that on here. When this menu pops up, make sure Connect Splines is selected. We'll hit OK. And there's our vector art as a spline. We might need to do some cleanup. So let's come up here and pop this open and see what we've got. Looks like we've got a few paths here. Let's click on one of these and we'll zoom in here. Sometimes you get a few stray points. I think in this case, we'll just get rid of these. So six, seven, eight, and nine as well. Let's grab all those and hit delete. Then our path one seems to be what we need. Let's drag that out of there and delete that null and we'll rename that flag spline. Okay, I like to work from the center of the world. So let's come down to coordinates and we'll set these all to zero. So it's right in the middle of our scene. And we'll frame that up. And now we want to turn our spline into a mesh that we can work with. So with it selected, we'll come up here and we'll grab an extrude. Remember to hold Alt so it's automatically applied. And it's come in a bit too thick. We want this to be nice and flat like a flag should. So we'll grab that extrude and down under object, you can see this is the Z axis. We'll bring that down to zero. So it's just as flat as a normal plane would be. So it doesn't actually have any depth. It just has that front surface. Now, if we come up here under display and turn our lines on, you'll see that there isn't any. We're going to need a bit of geometry in here because we're going to be deforming this as cloth. So let's go over to the caps tab in our extrude object. And then down here where it says type, we want to change that from n-gons to quadrangles which looks a bit crazy at first. But if we come down to regular grid and switch that on, you can see our geometry over here is a lot more even. And that should work quite nicely for our flag. So the next step is to convert all this into a single mesh so we can start our animation. If we go up and right click on our extrude and down here we'll select current state to object, which will create a new single mesh for us. So we'll get rid of this old stuff, delete that, and we'll grab our new geometry and rename that to flag one. And there's a reason we've put a one on there, which you'll see later on in the tutorial. And while we're here, let's hit Alt G on the keyboard to put this in a null. And we'll rename that to flag. So we can keep all this nice and tidy. Okay, let's zoom out a little bit and we'll quickly add a flag pole over to the side here. We'll keep it nice and simple for the tutorial. Let's just come up here and we'll grab a cylinder. And it's just a matter of repositioning this and grabbing this one, we can stretch it out and move it down. And we can adjust the radius by grabbing this outside dot and just scaling that in a little bit. Now that's all looking a bit more flag-like. Let's reposition that. And we'll quickly go up here and rename our cylinder to pole. And we'll drag that down under our flag null. Okay, let's turn our flag geometry into a dynamic cloth. We'll grab it and under tags, we'll come down to simulation tags. And at the bottom here, we'll grab a cloth. Now, if we hit play, Straight out of the box, it just falls straight down. Let's rewind that. So the first step is going to be fixing some of these vertex points. So they look like they're attached to our pole. So we'll come over here and hit this button to switch into point mode. And then we'll come up to the selection button here and make sure we've got live selection selected. I think selecting points might be easier in the front view. So if we just middle mouse button click, then down here is the front view. And we'll middle click again to get into that. Let's reposition this and zoom in a bit. Now all we want to do is click and drag to paint these points. We'll put some there, come down to the middle, and down the bottom, and then maybe some spots in between each of those. 
Let's zoom in a bit here. Yeah, it's something like that. Cool. So those points will be locked off and hopefully that gives us an interesting effect. Let's go back to our perspective view. And if we click on our cloth tag and under dresser, with those points selected, we just want to click set for fixed points. And now if we give that a play, we've got a lot of geometry here, so it's going to run pretty slow, but you can kind of see those points are stuck in position now. Okay, let's just pause that for now and rewind and see if we can figure out a way to make this sim a bit faster. One option we have is over here under the expert tab. We can bring the sub sampling down to one and we'll give that a go. And that's definitely sped things up a bit. We'll pause that and rewind. Another thing we can do is go back to the tag tab and bring those iterations down. We'll try 50 and give that a play. And that's much faster. Yeah, we'll pause that. This might be a bit easier to see if we come up to display and turn our shading back on. And then over here, we'll switch back to object mode and you can see all those nice details in our cloth. Before we go too far with our simulations, it's probably a good idea to set up our scene. Let's go up to the project settings here and we'll change our output to 1920 by 1080. And this time we're gonna go for 24 frames a second. Let's close this window. And if we hit control D, we'll change our project settings to 24 frames per second as well. Then we'll come down to our timeline. We want a few more frames to play with. So let's put 400 in here and stretch that out. All right, now we're ready to go. Let's go back to our cloth tag and down under the forces tab this time. Let's give our flag a bit of wind. Let's try 10 centimeters in the X direction and five centimeters in the Z direction. We'll bring that strength up to 20 and let's try this without turbulence. We'll put zero in both of those. Then we'll turn that air resistance up to 10 and hit rewind and play. And if your simulation is suddenly really slow again, I think it might be a bit of a bug. If we pause that and go back to our tag tab, you'll see that our iterations have magically gone back up again. Let's bring that back down to 50 and rewind and play. And now it's nice and fast again. It does look a little bit springy though. So let's pause that. And over here under flexion, let's bring that right down to zero. Maybe bring that bounce down to 10 and we'll give that a go. It's looking a bit better. It's still a bit too stretchy looking for my liking. Let's pause that. And if we come over to the forces tab, let's try bringing that drag up to 4%. Let's give that a try. Okay, cool. That's good enough for now, I think. Let's pause that. If your folds are looking a bit jaggedy, we can always come up and grab our flag. And then over here, we'll bring in a subdivision surface. Remember to hold Alt when you click it so it's automatically applied. And that's looking a lot smoother. Okay, now that we're ready to finalize our simulation, we can probably come back to our cloth tag and back in the tag tab, we can bring those iterations back up to something like 600, just to make our final simulation a little bit more accurate. Let's rewind. And now we wanna cache our 400 frames. So under the cache tab, all we have to do is hit calculate cache. You'll get a little warning pop up and just press yes. And it'll start caching those frames. Could take a couple of minutes, so we'll come back when it's ready. Okay, so when that's all done, you can see over here that it's cached successfully. And if we hit play, the playback speed is much faster because it doesn't have to calculate anything anymore. It's just reading from the disc. And we can speed it up even more by disabling that subdivision surface. And that's pretty much our flag animation sorted. Let's see if we can figure out a way to make it loop. If we let it get to the end, you can see it doesn't yet. Let's pause that again and rewind. Also with the cache, you can choose to save if you wanna save it as an external file. Okay, let's make this loop. The first step is grabbing our flag one and holding control, we'll drag that up there to make a duplicate. Let's rename that flag two and we'll duplicate it one more time and we'll just call this one flag main. We don't need that cloth tag on this one, so let's delete that and we'll just hide the other two for now. If we go down and hit play now, you'll see that our flag main is back to the original shape that we had when we built this without any animation. And if we go back up and hide this again and bring our flag two back, this is the duplicate of the flag one with our cached animation built in. 
But what we want to do is come back to the cloth tag and we've got a little feature in here where we can offset the animation. So if we bring this back negative 300 frames and play that through, you can see we're just playing the last 100 frames before it stops, which makes sense because it's gone back 300 frames. So to get our looping animation, we just need to blend our start and end animations, flag one and flag two. And to do that, we'll have them both driving our flag main with the use of a pose morph. And you can find that guy under tags, character tags, and there he is, pose morph. All right, because we're gonna have 100 frames overlapping, we wanna bring the total frame number down to 300, so 100 frames less. Back in our pose morph, we wanna tick points because the points are what we have animated. So pose zero is our current flat pose, which is how our flag main is right now. But we wanna bring in flag one and just hit yes here. And flag two, same deal. And yes again. And you can see our flags change now. And that's because if we click on animate here, it's adopting the point positions of flag number two. And if we bring that down, you can see it reverts back to its initial pose. Let's bring this one down to zero as well. And we'll play this ahead a few frames. And hopefully I can give you a better idea of what's happening here. If we unhide both of these and spin around a little bit, we want our flat flag, which is flag main, this guy, to morph its points to flag one and flag two. And if we come down and bring the slider up, it's morphing to flag one. And if we bring flag two up, it's morphing to flag two. So if we go back to the start, we want it to assume the shape of flag two. So let's bring those down and add a keyframe. And we'll go back up and hide the animated flags. So we can just see our pose morphed flag Let's just get this into position somewhere like that. Now, while we're on frame zero, we'll set a keyframe for flag one. We want to slowly bring this on while fading out flag two. So at frame 100, we'll set flag one to 100% and flag two to zero and keyframe both of those. Now, if we play that back from the start, you should see a seamless transition from one flag to the next. And if we let that play all the way through, we should get a nice seamless loop. Okay, that wasn't quite as seamless as I'd hoped for. I don't think Cinema 4D is refreshing the frame quick enough, but we can fix that. Let's go back to the start and over here under the basic tab in our pose morph, we just want to change our priority to initial and that should force it to update and hopefully give us a nice smooth transition. Okay, everything's looking good so far. And as we come to the loop point, seamless. Also, if you want it to be a bit smoother, don't forget to come back up here and turn on that subdivision surface again. And there we go, we've got our looping animated flag. Of course, you can go back to the cloth tags and play around with it to get a different look, but I think that will take us to the end of this week's tutorial. As usual, you can download the project files below to save a bit of time, and you can find a whole bunch of extra stuff on our Patreon page. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below, or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.